So today morning when I started my work, I uh, quickly checked Twitter, which you probably shouldn't. Uh, but I saw a tweet from Alien from the Astro team who said like, oh, I just like set up my first monorepo ever. And Mark chimed in and said like, what did you use? Did you use like PMPM workspaces or NPM workspaces? And he was like, oh, I went to the Turbo Repo. Uh, and so Mark immediately chimes in and is like, what is the actual advantage of using something like Turbo Repo or an X or whatever other tool you might be using over just going with a plain NPM, PMPM or also Yarn workspaces setup? And this is a question I often get uh, when I talk to people or on Twitter or at conferences. So I figured, let me just sit down, record a super quick video and explain some of this stuff. The first thing that often comes up when being asked such a question, people are immediately like, well, speed, right? So caching, remote caching, parallelization, all that good stuff. And this is actually true, but usually that's not what you suffer when you create a new monorepo. Because like usually you start with a small one, you have just a bunch of packages, and luckily nowadays we have tools like Veet, which are super fast. So speed is not necessarily the first thing you might experience, but there's some other good DX things that you can improve over a plain NPM monorepo. So let's have a quick look. So I have here a very small, super simple NPM workspaces monorepo, and you can see that by this workspaces property here, which is at the root level package JSON. And so I have here a, a React app generated with the vCLI. I have another one with the Remix CLI, and both depend on this shared UI package down here. Now you can also do something like NX graph, and I don't have NX installed here, uh, but you can run it on any NPM, PMPM, or Yarn workspace. And that allows you to open here this view in the browser and basically visualize how these two packages uh, look like and how our monorepo structure looks like. So this is the situation that we have just to, we have something shared here. Now, when I mentioned before that speed is not necessarily the first thing you might benefit in terms of adding tools on top of just an NPM work, workspace monorepo, is task pipelines. Because we have seen that there is this dependency between, for instance, let's say React V and that shared UI package. And so basically, if I want to build this React V package, so I would run npm run build workspace React V, it will fail the build because it cannot find that shared UI package because I haven't built it yet, right? So you can see here, it failed to resolve the entry to shared UI package because I haven't built it yet. And because the React V package here depends on the build output of that package down here in that packages folder. So basically what you would have to do is make sure that you first run the build of shared UI. And so once that is done, we can go back and run it from for React V, and now it would succeed properly. So this is called a task pipeline because the tool needs to understand that, well, if someone runs the build or even the serving of this React V, it should first build the shared UI package down here because otherwise it will fail. And this is one of the first things I feel personally can be enhanced quite a bit by using some of the other tooling on top of an NPM workspaces. So let me go ahead and I'm going to use NX here and I go and just install here that latest package. So we need to make sure to install that. And so once we have installed that, we can add a new file here, which is called NX.json, which allows us to specify some metadata uh, related to NX. So let me also paste in our schema so we get some out of completion. And one of, the first, one of the first things I can do to define such a task pipeline is here tell basically whenever you run a build, then you have a property called depends on, and you can tell basically with that caret symbol, run all the builds of the dependent project. That current symbol specifically tells that an X should go and look at all the dependencies downstream and build them first if they have a build target. And so if we retry this again, let me remove actually all that these folders that we have created, but now I run it through the NX pipeline, such that NX actually is able to take care of the build. What it will do is just run the scripts, the package JSON scripts that we already have. So if I run, for instance, something like NX build react v, uh, and X will go here in the React V package, look at the package JSON and run that build script. So the build that I mentioned here is specifically mentioning this script or targeting this script dump here. Now, if I run this, you will see now an X is waiting for one dependent project to build first. And that is exactly that shared UI package that I just mentioned below. So an X understood, well, there's the dependent package that has a build target. So let me run that first and then invoke the build target of the tool, basically, that I'm running or the package that I'm running, which in this case is React V. So I think that this is an immediate benefit that you get because you simply don't have to think about it. And clearly you can configure that even differently. So you can go ahead and say, well, I also want to do that for the dev script because clearly once I spin up the dev server, 
that shared UI package should also be pre-built. And there's other things that you could do, like potentially watch for dependencies and rebuild them automatically. There's much more that you could potentially add. So that's, in my opinion, one of the first immediate benefits that you get. The next one, which I already anticipated before, is clearly speed, right? So if I now have multiple of these packages, I want to make sure that there's, they are built as fast as possible. And many modern tools nowadays have something built in that is called caching. And so in order to enable caching, I can just go again in here and say cache true for this build. And this is an opt-in because I want to make sure that the build is actually cacheable because if it has some side effects, it's not. So I want to enable that manually here. And so if I go back and run React Vite build, it would rerun it the first time around because there is no cache yet. But you can see if I rerun it again, it is basically immediate, just taking a couple of milliseconds because there's no change that had happened. And so it just went ahead and builds it. And so the more packages you have, for instance, if I run multiple targets, if I run build and test and lint, I don't even know what I have here, uh, all of these targets defined, you can see now it runs through, but for instance, the React Vite is not being run again because that is already cached and just runs it for the other ones. And if I would rerun clearly, all of them would be cached. Now, by default, the cache here lives just locally. So there's just an NX folder and there's a cache in here. But then if you want to use that on CI, clearly you would go and have to do something like NX connect and connect that with the remote caching. And if I rerun here the, the build of all the, the testing and linting, it would run them first time to produce some of the caching. then you can see it would be pulled down now from the remote cache and synced locally to my local folder here. So clearly on CI, you would need some central place where that cache is being hosted. So we've talked about the improvements of like task pipeline, about potentially the caching. There's clearly much more, even some like of the DX features that you get. For instance, if I run here just with an NPM workspace, all the builds for the workspace, you can see the log is simply being streamed out here per project. And there's some nice DX improvements that you, you get basically by having them in a much nicer form, especially if you have a lot of projects, you just see like a list of builds going through and only those that fail actually get the full stack trace printed out because usually you're just interested in those. And that's it. So I want to keep it short on purpose. Uh, and I think like with very little change today, so with one package here and a small config, we actually improved our Monrepo experience in that we have some nicer DX around using the commands and running commands and have caching to make it faster. But clearly there's so much more I would want to talk to you about, but I want to be mindful of your time. So there's more things you could potentially add, but over time usually, when your Monrepo grows, you might want to look into NX plugins that help you generate some of the boilerplate around configuring caching for specific technologies like React, Vue, Angular, and so on, to even to the point where you want to improve your CI experience by distributing across machines. So we have solutions for that, um, but that's for another video. Hope you enjoyed this one. Take care.